Hello, I want to make this video to help you out if your Ford Focus dual clutch automatic is having an issue where it doesn't engage in uh, either reverse or forward or both forward and reverse. It's a common issue and I see questions about it quite a bit so I just wanted to go over the basics here. Step one, get a scan tool. Wait, don't click away. It's not as bad as you think. I'm going to recommend Forescan, F-O-R-S-C-A-N. I haven't used it, but I know other techs who have, and it's a powerful free uh, scan tool software that you can download to your laptop and bring out to your car. You will need to buy an interface for your car, an OBD2 interface. Take your scan tool software, scan the car for codes, but before you go too far, did, I want to ask, did you have to jump start your car? Is your battery dead? Is it a bad battery? If so, first and foremost, get a good battery in there, clear all the codes out, and try again. Because uh, the TCM is the largest draw on the battery and charging system, and uh, if the battery is not optimal, that the TCM for the transmission, the control module, is going to be largely affected by a bad battery, shorted cell, whatever you're uh, dealing with with your battery. So make sure you have a good battery in there first of all. All right, if your focus is move, is not moving either in reverse or forward, not necessarily both, but either forward or reverse is having an issue, take note of the codes you have. A good starting point is to take the upper and lower clutch actuators and switch their position. Take the one from the bottom, put it on the top, and the one on the top and put it on the bottom. They are the same part number, they're completely interchangeable. That's a great way to start. Uh, switch those around clear the codes and see what happens. If the same codes come back, then you know it's not the clutch actuators that's the problem. It's something else. I just wanted to mention that first because that's a great easy way to start and the clutch actuators are easy to take off. You can refer to my video for clutch actuator replacement. You can find it on my videos list or I can link these videos below if that'll help. That replacement video will show you how to access and remove the clutch actuators. Okay, so let's say you're having a problem getting in reverse and you swap the actuator locations and now you're having a problem going forward but reverse works correctly. Go ahead and go by the dealership and go to the parts department and get two actuators uh, ordered for you. They might have them in stock and replace them with Ford OEM actuators. Uh, yeah, easy enough there. Now, if you swap the actuators and the symptoms and codes did not change, you're going to have to go further here. The next thing I'm going to want you to do there, if that didn't lead you anywhere, is to determine what type of codes you have. There are two types of codes for the transmission. The first one is electrical codes, and the second would be mechanical codes. The uh, electrical codes, you'll either see P090C, typically for the clutch B actuator uh, circuit voltage low, or you'll see P0902 for clutch A actuator circuit low. I'm just going to come out and say 2017-2018 uh, model focus, your model. If you have those two, one of those two codes, go ahead and replace both upper and lower actuators. That's very common. But if you have a 2012 through 2016 model focus, you're more than likely looking at a TCM issue. And obviously, if you have those actuator codes you've and you've swapped the actuators like I mentioned previously, then you will have some direction already for your diagnosis. Like I've already said, the if your code transferred to the A clutch from the B clutch or the B to the A, when you swap them, then replace both actuators. And if they didn't, and in this situation, if you have the actuator circuit codes, you're and they stay the same, you're going to want to replace the TCM. All right, so next up, I'm going to start mentioning some uh, mechanical codes here. If you have codes uh, with descriptions saying clutch A and or clutch B stuck applied, or apply time range or performance, something along those lines, then you're more than likely having an issue with the... Uh, clutch forks seizing due to rust, corrosion, uh, clutch fiber debris clogging up the forks and causing damage and causing them to stick. 
that's more than likely where you're heading next. Now I do have a video that'll help you if you su uh, suspect the uh, clutch forks sticking. The uh, video is uh, diagnosis of P07A3 and P07A5. Um, there is kind of a lengthy intro to that because I'm diagnosing a car, but uh, it'll show you how to uh, use the clutch fork release tool. It's a little socket that splines into the forks once you take the actuators out. And you can turn the clutch uh, forks counterclockwise 10 times, and it should feel butter smooth and release instantly when you let go of it. If it's anything other than that, your forks need to be replaced, and that's what's causing your issue. If your clutch forks feel fine when you turn them counterclockwise 10 times, and they release properly, but you still suspect a clutch fork issue, uh, once it's in the release position, put that socket in there and just lightly try to turn clockwise. Just try slightly to turn clockwise. Um, if it goes past it stops, that means the uh, clutch fork is coming apart. That's something I've seen before. You can have uh, lack of engagement from the forks, even if they turn counterclockwise smoothly. Um, because if, you, if it's at the stops and it goes clockwise when it shouldn't, then you have a problem there. And that's something I've seen before too, so you can check that. Don't put too much pressure on it. Just see if it starts moving when it's not supposed to there. Alright, so another thing, it's a dry clutch, so if you've got low transmission fluid, that's, I mean, transmission fluid is not going to affect anything as far as engagement of the clutch goes. Just I wanted to point that out. I've seen people ask about that. No, the fluid level in the transmission is not going to affect the operation of the transmission. It's just the fluid is there to uh, cool and lubricate the bearings and synchronizers and all that inside the transmission. All right, so anyway, if your clutch forks are binding, if they're not butter smooth when you turn them or they don't release properly, I do have a video on how to remove the transmission, replace the clutch and the forks. Um, so I've got you covered there too. I do have a video unboxing the Luck Rep Set, which is a kit with, that comes with the clutch and the forks and the slave cylinder and all the hardware that you'll need. And uh, if you're curious about that, I believe it's like six or seven hundred dollars it comes with everything and uh, that video shows unboxing and it seems like a good product a good deal there so I've got that video too and uh, going back to electrical issues if you don't want to pay for a TCM just yet or you're waiting on it at Ford uh, for the TCM to come in you can attempt cleaning the grounds. I've heard people have good luck with that. If you wait till the end of the video here, I'm almost home, I'll pop the hood on my Focus here and show you the grounds that I'm talking about. That's worth a shot, definitely, um, before you go replacing the TCM. But yeah, nine times out of 10 or more, it's either an issue with the clutch and the forks or the TCM or the actuators. Now, on the very, on the rear, uh, situation that that's not an issue with those you may have an issue with the uh, if your transmission doesn't move forward or reverse you could have an issue with the shift drum stops on the case inside the transmission now if you have four scan go ahead and if you suspect that go ahead and do a clutch adaptive learn um, and uh, see if it go through the adaptive learn for the clutch and see if it gets caught on a step called uh, gear command for neutral something along those lines if it gets caught there and just times out and doesn't do anything then that uh, you can kind of confirm the issue with the shift drum stops there um, in, that, in that case you'll need a new transmission case um, I've seen that several times but it's nowhere near as common as the clutch and TCM fail, failures but I wanted to point that out too and if you have a broken shift drum stop in a transmission, that once again will cause no engagement at all, and you won't be able to do the clutch adaptive learn. So now you can also have no engagement forward or reverse if you have two season clutch forks, which is very possible. It can definitely happen. But uh, yeah, just a minute here. I'll go ahead and show you the grounds I'm talking about for the TCM. All right, back home. So under the hood of your focus here, well, this is mine. Um, <laughs> so the first ground I'd like you to clean, if you want to try the ground cleaning procedure here, is this ground right here. 
go ahead and before you take that off to avoid any uh, arcing there take your uh, battery uh, terminal here take it loose and put it aside and then take this I believe it's a 13 millimeter pull it off move the cable aside get some sandpaper uh, remove the paint off of where this ground touches clean the threads of the bolt and run it back together and before you put the battery cable back on pull the air box out if you're not sure how to do that uh, if you look watch my video for clutch actuator replacement uh, like I mentioned previously in the video, that one, and uh, it'll sh I'll show you in there how to remove that. It's pr it's simple. You just loosen the clamp, take these two lines off, disconnect this, and pull your flap off here and disconnect that, and then it pops out. Okay, you will see a ground on the side of the transmission, big thick wire about that big around, and it comes up and bolts to the frame here. I want you to clean the. Uh, ground on the frame off of that cable in the same manner that you did that okay and also on the transmission that I'll, sh I'll show you that cable here in a second um, that ground on the transmission inspect that make sure it's tight make sure there's no corrosion growing on it um, here I'll get underneath the car and show you the ground um, I don't all right okay there's the clutch actuator if you look above the actuator, that's where the cable is, right there. You can kind of make it out on the side of the transmission. It's held on with a nut against a stud up there to the left a little bit above the actuator. All right, back up here. And like I said, that I have heard that the ground cleaning has occasionally fixed TCM issues or electrical issues there. That is not going to do anything for you if you have a mechanical code or a binding clutch lever, clutch fork. So, I mean, you can still do that for that issues and that might help prevent future issues, but um, you're, if you've got a seizing fork, you've got a mechanical issue that won't be fixed by that. But um, yeah, I just wanted to make this guide here and I hope it helps somebody out. And uh, thank you for watching. Please subscribe for plenty of more videos like this. And uh, have, a, have yourself a fantastic day. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any further questions. I'm more than happy to help, and I usually reply really quickly. Have a great day. Good luck with your focus. And uh, thanks for watching.